G'day everybody, welcome back to another weekly tipping video on the channel. Jeez Louise, the season has gone fast for sure, already at round 11. And speaking of round 11, in this video today, we're going to be doing my tips for round 11 of the 2022 AFL season. If you're going to enjoy today's video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe, that'd be much appreciated. And let's kick it off with my tips from last week. Okay, my tips from round 10, and I got a score of 6 out of 9. I've been getting 6 out of 9 for... Uh, I think consecutive number of rounds now. And on the ESPN footy tips, I did activate my joke around my first one. So I'll be getting double points for this round. So I've risen up the ladder quite a bit by like, I don't know, maybe 200 places, which is bloody awesome. But anyway, let's quickly go over the round. Carlton versus the Swans. Tip the blue baggies. And geez, the margin was pretty close. I tipped them by 14 and they won by 15. Uh, nevertheless, still a really high quality game of footy. Geez, the ways how good would Carlton they truly look like? They're going to be possibly a top four side. One of the best midfields in the competition showed at that game. Plus, like. 30 contested possessions at half time. Took the foot off in the pedal in the second half where the Swans managed to come back. And some could possibly say, including myself, they really should have run over the top. 14 inside 50s, one goal five in the final quarter from the Swans. But Carlton's defense was able to hang on. And it just was a terrific Friday night game. Then Geelong versus Port Adelaide, a pretty ordinary game in my eyes. I was really hoping this game would be a lot more closer. Port Adelaide were four in the trot, heading to Geelong. And to be fair, Geelong just shows how hard it is over there to play at GMHBA Stadium. They pick up a very nice win over Port. Western Bulldogs versus Suns. I did tip the Suns. Thought they could go three in a row against three quite good quality opposition. But geez, the Bulldogs were able to hold their ground and it was just a very physical battle. Suns played very well. It was more of a healthy loss to be fair. And the game was up for grabs really until the end of the game. Adam Trelaw in his 200th game was magnificent. Bontepelu is great down forward. Just a lot of their star quality plays playing good footy and doggies pick up a much needed win. Then the Demons versus North Melbourne. This is actually a pretty exciting game to watch because I think around half time or throughout the game, uh, North Melbourne were leading during some instances of the game are only down by under 10 points, but the Demons do it so well. Second half, they just casually and calmly kick goal after goal after goal and win by 40, casually 40 points. And yeah, there again, they're now 10-0, the Demons, who will stop them? Then St. Kilda versus Adelaide, another pretty scrappy game full of free kicks. I mean, the free kicks are quite ordinary throughout the whole round. Again, with a few other games, it was really up for grabs right until the death. But how about Max King kicking five goals? I'm pretty sure it was. Uh, St. Kilda just seemed to be the more accurate side. And if Adelaide could kick a bit straighter, they might have won this game. But uh, yeah, I, I really don't think it was a high quality game of footy at all. It was, it was pretty scrappy. A lot of skill errors. But hey, St. Kilda, much needed win if they want to make top four. Then the dream time game, Richmond and Essendon, of course, did tip Richmond. Essendon really came firing out of the blocks compared to the week before against the Swans. They were physically more up for it. A lot of fighting as well, but that usually isn't the answer for physicality. Well, they did show it, I guess. But again, as I just thought uh, last week during my tipping video, I just feel that Richmond are too talented of a side. Uh, to lose against Essendon and I did tip the Tigers and they got a nice comfortable win. For the Sunday games, Giants and West Coast, as per usual, did tip the Giants and a very nice win they got over West Coast under the new interim coach of Mark McVeigh. It was great to see a lot of players playing more of their natural positions. Cornelio, as a true midfielder, played an excellent game, probably best on ground. Himmelberg was playing fullback, which was an interesting move. And it'll be quite interesting to see how McVeigh will line up Taranto and Whitfield when they do come back in. Then Hawthorne versus the Brisbane Lions. This is probably a bit of an unpopular opinion, but this is honestly probably one of the best games so far this year. It's hard to say that because of the umpiring, which was just questionable. We saw the giant Newcomb shove, which was just a casual push free kick given just so many unusual calls this round but still it was just an entertaining game usually those shootout games goal after goal it was pretty much like that throughout the whole game and you just thought you know the, the Lions class would uh, you know seal at home and kick goal after goal like so many top quality sides do but Hawks were just not giving in Luke Bruce kicked a few Sam Butler on I'm pretty sure his second game was magnificent and John Newcomb just keeps on getting better so geez you know Hawthorne have a pretty ordinary midfield but they were fantastic and they were able to match up against, you know, probably the first contender to Melbourne. Massive win for the Hawks. Now, Freo versus Collingwood. I didn't realize this game was going to be uh, absolutely pouring when I did my tipping video. And I did tip Freo by 44 and they lost by almost 44 to the Pies in another wet weather game. It's probably a bit of an excuse, but, you know, Freo are pretty 
mech in the rain because they are from Perth and Perth is usually a pretty sunny city. But still, there is no excuses and they do have to be playing better in the rain. But Collingwood just took full advantage, played to the conditions. Ollie Henry coming on as the sub. Kick five goals, I'm pretty sure it was. Jack Crisp is starring. John Noble, very underrated play. He is just a true role player, hard nut. And again, a massive win for the Pies. That will definitely give him a bit of confidence against Carlton this week, which will be a massive game. So as per usual in my tipping videos, before I get into my tips for the round, I go over the top 10 in my tipping competition. If you yet to join my tipping competition, the link is in the description down below. Make sure to join up, free to join, and for the top finishes at the end of the year, there is some plenty of cash up for grabs. Anywho, let's get on to the top 10. The 10th, we've got Hawks R Bay with 82 points. 9th, Silk Serpent YT with 82 points. 8th, Geordie Pluto YT with 83 points. 7th, Jason's Raiders with 83 points. 6th, Lukey 28 with 83 points. 5th, Buck for Life with 84 points. 4th, Batruni with 85 points. 3rd, Demons Premiers 2021 with 86 points. Second, Richmond for Life with 86 points. And first, Banger Harvey with 87 points. Okay, let's get into now my tips for round 11. And we start off with an absolute, another cracking Friday night game. Again, the Swans are playing and they are playing the Richmond Tigers in a bit of Margrook footy. Going to be an awesome, awesome game to see. Pretty similar to Dreamtime last week, I feel. Will be probably a lot of pre-match and mid-match rituals, which will just be a spectacular event to watch. Uh, but nevertheless, the actual game itself will be a spectacular game to watch. Two teams that are really neck and neck in the power rankings. Both sides have the same wins and losses, the same percentage. You really think this is going to be a close game. And in my eyes, it's going to be a close game. It has to be. Tom Lynch is going to be out with a hamstring injury. I think that is a huge out for the Tigers because he's such a reliability down forward. But they do have other excellent plays like Jaden Short, Dion Prestia, Shai Bolton. You could say they're probably in all Australian form at the moment. Just yeah, class plays, and they do love that attacking style of footy against the Swans, who have just been a bit uneasy in their defense line. Oh, it's a really tough one, but I feel like I will back in the Swans here. One of the main reasons why I do want to tip the Swans here is just because I feel Tom Lynch is out, it's a massive out. It's going to be interesting to see how they'll go with just Jack Rewalt. Maybe he could uh, kick home all the goals, but for me, I think Swans will bounce back. They've just been a bit uneasy, and I think they should be a lot better of a side than they are at the moment. So I'm going to be tipping the Swans here in a very close one, and they'll win by five points. Now we've got Brisbane Lions hosting GWS at the Gabba 1.45 p.m. time slot, and I'm pretty sure, is this the first daytime Gabba game this year? I think it is. I think all the Gabba games have been at uh, either twilight or night. Anyway, the game itself... Giants looked really promising last week. I know it was against West Coast, but they do have a lot of upside with their new coach. Whitfield should be back. Torano should be back. And they could really have a full strength side almost. And they could really challenge the Lions as well. Giants, we all know, very unpredictable side. But you really do think Lions win this game. They should bounce back after just their underachieving loss and a bit of a shockful loss. I felt like the Lions players went into their shell almost just Hawthorne really wanted that game more. But anyways, Lions should bounce back here and pick up a nice, comfortable win by 23 points. Now, Geelong versus Adelaide at GMHBA. I saw a fact somewhere that the last time Adelaide beat Geelong was 2003. You don't really want to take history too much into your tips, but I think it is an important factor, especially that this game is at GMHBA Stadium, which is very convincing against Port Adelaide last week. They just... Got it done, not really much was said about it, and dismantled a Port Adelaide side. Adelaide, however, are very, very competitive at the moment. A team not to write off. But for me, Geelong, I feel, are in better form and do, of course, have a bit better talent. And, you know, again, their forwards, Cameron, Hawkins, even Stengel bobbing up here and then. He's been a very underrated small forward. They should get a nice win here over Adelaide and win by 19 points. Now Melbourne versus Fremantle at the MCG. Jeez the wheeze, it does not get any easier for Freo here. They have lost two in a row and are now versing the Demons, and the week after that, they're versing the Lions. So Jesus Christ, they could seriously be going 0-4 from these last run of games. And to be fair, I am really feeling they will bounce back here. They've just been under the pump. 
You could really say that it was a bit of a reality check for Freo, which I definitely agree, but they still have shown to be a very excellent side. They are a young side, so inconsistency will probably occur throughout the season. If Freo here were versing any Victorian team rather than Melbourne, I'd probably tip Freo. But for me, Melbourne, they're 10-0. And seriously, they're on track to probably go at least 20 games undefeated. They're currently 17, I think, at the moment. But yeah, it's just, um, you've got to tip it, okay? They just look too good not to tip. And Melbourne should pick up a win here and win by 16 points. Now West Coast hosting Western Bulldogs at Optus Stadium. As I've said many times this year, Optus Stadium is usually quite a bit of a fortress, but not for the Eagles this year. It seems like any team that heads over to the West and plays the Eagles just absolutely smash the Eagles. So I feel like this should happen with the Bulldogs here. They'll get a massive win and they'll win by 50 points. What a game this is going to be. Gold Coast taking on Hawthorne at TIO Stadium. I'm pretty sure that's in Darwin. I'm pretty sure the week after this, Gold Coast have another game in Darwin. So it's great to see them playing some games up there in Northern Territory, part of their deal or sponsoring, whatever. Uh, but again, against the Hawks, head-to-head -head wise, this really does look like a close game or just very even matchup. Gold Coast, Hawks, pretty similar, pretty even on the power rankings. Uh, Gold Coast probably just... Maybe a bit more convincing at the moment, but still very unknown side. A bit of a raw side at times because we don't really expect Gold Coast to be making finals, but they seriously can be this year. And if they do want to make finals, this has to be a win over the Hawks. And maybe you could say it was just a bit of a one-off game to see Hawks beat the Lions, but you never know. They could head to Darwin and pick up a nice win over the Suns. I think for me, I'm going to be sticking with the Suns here. I'm pretty sure they are favorites, which is uh, pretty awesome to see. Good on them. And uh, yeah, going to be a close game, I reckon. And they'll win this one by six points. Now for the Sunday games, and we have St. Kilda hosting North Melbourne at Marvel Stadium. St. Kilda have a really good opportunity to bolster into the top four, I'm pretty sure, uh, if Fremantle do lose. And against the Kangaroos, very competitive against the Demons last week, but we just don't know about the Kangaroos. They could be competitive one week. The next week be absolutely dismal, so Saints should get a comfortable win here and win by 41 points. Another cracking game, we have Collingwood versus Carlton, probably one of the biggest rivalries in the AFL. These two teams, no matter how good or how bad a team is playing, these two sides will leave no stone unturned and play terrific footy. And I feel like the odds or chances of winning is a bit of a myth in these games because it's going to be one of those classic rivalries, like 60 plus thousand at the MCG. And I feel like with these kind of atmospheres, anything could happen. And I know that Carlton do really look red hot at the moment and they should win this game. But you've got to go for the risky tip sometimes, I do say. And I'm feeling the Pies will pick up one of their wins of the season against the Blues in an absolute thrilling contest. Probably maybe one of the games of the year I am feeling. They're going to go neck and neck and Collingwood will pick up a very tough and professional win by 11 points. And for the final game of the round, we have Port Adelaide hosting Essendon at Adelaide Oval. Essendon just seem to be going worse and worse at the moment. You've got to give them respect, I guess, a little bit for showing a bit more fight against the Tigers last week. But for Port Adelaide, they've picked up their home record a bit, I guess you can say. Starting to build a bit of a fortress, as I do say myself. And again, head-to-head -head wise, Port Adelaide, yeah, they should be getting a win here over the derailed Bombers at the moment and they should knock off even more of their confidence, I feel, and win by 21 points. So everyone, there were my tips for round 11 of the 2022 AFL season. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you went on to enjoy today's video, and feel free to comment down below what you think of my tips, and also comment down yours too. I'd love to hear your fellas' thoughts. Anyways, fellas, that is the end of today's video. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, I'll talk to you later. See you later, fellas.